Episode 10 of Classroom the Elite is the beginning of the rooftop arc. Probably one of the most hypest arcs that a lot of Classroom the Elite fans are waiting for and hoping that it's adapted very well. But we'll talk about that when that time comes. As for right now, we'll be talking about the most recent episode of Classroom the Elite, which is episode 10. So we start with the Anna Koji group all being together, talking about how they are pretty much relieved that they all passed the exam and how no one got expelled. Of course, they do realize that this special exam isn't the only one and there's more to come in the near future. However, one thing they do notice very quickly is the fact that Ichinose and Sakinagi are together even though they're considered rivals and it's a pretty much an unusual pairing to see and are wondering if they are becoming friends or they are friends for a while now. However, this is when Hasabe makes a comment saying how she doesn't really buy that Ichinose is this good girl overall, meaning that she doesn't believe that Ichinose is the nicest girl, that there's clearly something that she's probably hiding. Of course, the other former group join in saying does Hasabe hate Ichinose to which Hasabe says she wouldn't go that far but she just simply says that there's something that Ichinose may be hiding and that you know she probably isn't this whole nice girl that she's trying to be but of course the group doesn't really look into it that further saying how at the end of the day it doesn't really matter because Ichinose is still pretty much something that they have to take down in order for them to get to class A. The subject quickly changes as to what's going to happen on Christmas and it seems that Hasabe is the one that's mostly excited that Christmas is near and this is where Sakura starts asking Anakoji if he has any plans for Christmas to which Anakoji says no and this is when Hasabe of course starts teasing Sakura and as a result Sakura gets all flustered but it seems that Anakoji is not really paying much attention to the conversation as he's pretty much seeing that there's somebody who's actually watching him and he's trying to figure it out who that person is and that is when Anakoji sends a message to Kay and that's the start of the opening after the opening there's a scene between Sato and Karisawa in which they're walking together however Kay notices very quickly that she is being followed and being watched by somebody from class C Later that night, Kay asks Anakoi what she should do involving the class C watching her, to which Anakoi responds simply by saying that they're not going to do anything, so she should just simply ignore it because class C is just simply observing them and not going to do anything for the time being. This pretty much brings Kay to calm down, and this is when Anakoi asks for the thing that she asked her to do. And this is where Kay talks, saying how she's figured out who is the person that's watching Anakoji and pretty much been spying on him for a while. And she says that this is somebody from class A and not class C. After hearing this information, Anakoji hangs up K and starts to wonder why the person from class A that he's most likely confident is somebody that's part of Arisu group is spying on him. Of course, in the light novels, it's already established as to why Arisu is interested in Anakoji. And there was actually a few changes that they did with this entire scene. For one, it wasn't K who found out who the person spying on Anakoji was. It was Anakoji himself. He was very quick to find out who was spying on him. And actually, there was supposed to be a scene in which Anakoji confronts Komuro, that's the girl's name that's spying on him. Her name is Komuro from class A. And there was a whole, you know, scene in which Anakoji is confronting her, asking her why she is spying on him. But it seems that the anime is going to hold on to those scenes, probably until like the next episode. Because we've seen the anime rearrange certain events, so I wouldn't be surprised like if the next episode we get the scene in which Anakoji is confronting Komuro. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that for now because I don't want to talk too much because they might add this eventually in the next episode. Also, for those who are curious as to what kind of character Komuro is, um, to sum it all up, if you did not like Horkita's attitude in season 1 or in the beginning of the light novels, uh, Kamaru is 10 times worse, just letting you all know that her attitude is probably worse than Horikita's, but I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just saying this for those who are curious as to what kind of character Kamaru is. Trust me, she's going to be a character that you're probably going to get annoyed by because of her attitude. After this scene, we get a scene of a brand new school day to which Sudo comes in saying how Class C students have been trying to pick a fight with him. Hirata comes in telling Sudo if he did anything to the Class C students to which Sudo says no, he's been able to control himself. And the reason why he's most likely been able to control himself and not let his anger out is because of Horikita. Most likely Horikita told him not to do anything with the Class C students and Sudo has been pretty much behaving well because of Horikita. This is when Anakoya jumps in, you know, when he's talking to Horikita saying how Sudo is actually very loyal to her. Horikita just simply says that she acknowledges that Sudo is starting to change however there's still more improvements but she doesn't really care about that as she starts talking to Anakoi as to what's been going on with the class C and she quickly tells Anakoi that she has an idea as to why class C is monitoring class D. Anakoi tries to act like he has no idea what she's talking about but Horikita says how Ryuin is trying to find out who the mastermind of class D is and the reason why she says that is because for a while she's been not approached 
by any class C student. So it's very clear that Ryuin knows that Horikita isn't the mastermind of class D. There's somebody else that's doing all the stuff for class D. To which Anakoya responds simply by saying that yeah, it's most likely they're targeting him because they're probably starting to suspect him. Horikita asks if Anakoya is going to fight back, to which Anakoya says no. Of course, Horikita isn't surprised because Anakoya has a habit of not revealing his plan to anyone, not even Horikita. And this is where Horikita changes the subject, to which he hands Anakoya a book. Anakoya asks what the book is all about, to which she says how she wants him to return the book for her. Anakoya asks why. She simply says it's because Anakoya has been interested in this book and how if he returns it for her he could pretty much check it out for himself so that he could be the next to read the book and Koji obviously you know doesn't want to do it but Horikita insisted and she tells him that he better make sure that it's returned on time or else of course she's going to be very mad to which Anakoji understands and then we get the next scene in which is Anakoji going to the library and that's when he spots Hiyori who is unable to grab a book so he decides to help her out to which Hiyori is surprised to see Anakoya once again. It's kind of interesting how she remembers Anakoya because if you don't know in the previous episode she stated how she wasn't going to remember Anakoji's face. Now their conversation isn't too important but it's very interesting as it turns out Anakoji and Hiyori have a hobby in which is them reading books and they seem to enjoy reading books as they talk about books in this conversation and Hiyori even says how she's happy that there's someone else who's interested in books because she can't talk about books in class C because it seems that nobody in class C is interested in books. And Anakoya is having this discussion but he also states to Hiyori is that if this discussion is okay because he is considered maybe a suspect in class C but it seems that Hiyori is not interested in that. In fact she tells Anakoya that she doesn't want to get involved in that whole thing so their conversation is completely fine and that's when Hiyori says one last time thank you and she leaves. Now there was supposed to be another scene after this in which Hiyori invites Anakoya to lunch but we're probably going to get that in the next episode because once again the anime has a habit of rearranging events so I'm not going to talk about it I'm going to wait to see what happens in the next episode but just know that there was supposed to be a scene after this which involved Hiyori and Koji having lunch together. After his conversation with Hiyori, Chabashira calls him out saying how there's somebody that's wanting to talk to him and Anakoji is first confused as to who is this person that wants to talk to him but Chabashira simply escorts him to a private room and that's when we get the scene of Anakoji and his father. So yeah, as it turns out his father actually came to talk to him and he is not happy at the fact that Anakoji is at this school. So to basically sum up the entire conversation between Anakoji and his father Basically, Anakoji's father runs the white room. Anakoji's father was not happy when he found out that Anakoji escaped the white room to go to the school. And he was not happy at all when he found out that the butler, who was pretty much taking care of Anakoji for a while, told Anakoji about this school, which kind of gave Anakoji an idea of how to escape the white room. So the father pretty much gave the butler a punishment, which as a result led the butler to set himself on fire, which is a pretty brutal death. One thing that the anime did not mention was why the butler did that to begin with and it was actually as a result because this is stated in the light novel and Koji's father made sure that the butler's son didn't get a proper education he made sure that his son the butler's son did not go to any school and made sure that he did not have any education whatsoever of course the butler felt guilty and as a result he set himself on fire for the guiltiness because his son was pretty much punished for something that he did which just goes to show you how powerful Anakoji's father is and even Anakoji realizes this that Anakoji's father isn't somebody that a lot of people want to mess with because he could pretty much do whatever he wants and when he says something that he's going to do he is going to do it so after this conversation, Anakoya's father just gets into the details saying how he wants Anakoya to drop out of the school and all he needs to do is sign a piece of paper that's in the table. But of course Anakoya isn't going to drop out of the school. He has no plans to go back to the white room as he states he wants to follow his own path. Of course Anakoya's father is not happy with that answer and that's when somebody else comes in the room and that is the chairman of the school who is actually the father of Sakinagi. And it also seems that Sakinagi's father has a connection with Anakoya's father because it seems that he was involved in the white room as well as Anakoya's father recognizes him and quickly starts to talk to him. And this is when Sakinagi's father tells Anakoya's father that Anakoya 
has pretty much every right to refuse to drop out of the school unless he wants to drop out of the school which is very good that he doesn't and because the chairman was the one who actually recommended Anna Cody to come to the school pretty much Anna Cody has some sort of special protection after hearing this Anna Cody's father realizes this is just a waste of time and decides to leave however he tells Anna Cody that he the next time they meet will not be in a room he's actually going to make sure that Anna Cody gets back to the white room pretty much kind of challenging Anna Cody to see how long he'll last in this school and pretty much just showing us that Anna Cody's father is now going to make sure that Anna Cody gets back to the white room after Anna Cody gets out of the room and see that Travis Shiro was waiting for him all this time and asks what happened Anna Cody says that he now knows the truth and is the fact that Travis Shiro did not know Anna Cody's father remember how in season one Travis Shiro threatened Anna Cody that unless he gets the class to class A she was going to call his father well as a result she had no connection to his father the only reason why she knew about Anna Cody's father was because of Aris's dad that's the reason why she knew about that information was because well of course she's a teacher so she has to know these kind of things so she thought because of that she was going to use that to blackmail Anna Cody to show his skills show his abilities so that the class can reach class A because as a result Shabashir has an obsession of getting to class A and now that she has people who are capable of that she wants to make sure that she and as well as the class get to class A however because Anna Cody found out that she has no connection to his father she can't threaten him anymore so he tells Shabashir that from now on he is not going to be involved in the class anymore and he has no intentions of helping out with the class to get to class a because she has nothing to threaten him anymore so he pretty much can do whatever he wants of course Chabashir isn't happy with this but Anna Cody ignores her and just walks away Later that day, Anna Cody calls Kay to see what she's been up to and that's when Kay asks Anna Cody as to why he hides his abilities and that if he was like Harata showing off and pretty much being like a class leader, people will actually support him and he will actually be somebody that's really popular and well known at the school. Obviously Anna Cody doesn't want that so of course he just says how he's planning on just staying hidden and he doesn't want to get involved into too many things. Of course Kay doesn't agree to this but just she's about to talk once again. Anna Cody gets to the point telling Kay that from now on they're not going to be talking to each other ever again and this is going to be the last conversation. This surprises Kay and asks why, to which Anna Cody says that the thing that was keeping him from making sure that the class get to class A is no longer there so therefore he has no intentions of you know bringing the class to class A because he's not going to get himself involved and goes on to apologize to Kay for bringing her into situations that she didn't want to get herself involved and for making her do things that she probably wasn't a huge fan of but, but Kay is still shocked over this announcement but Anna Cody goes on to say how he still plans on helping her out he's going to make sure that she is protected he's going to protect her no matter what that's when Kay says to Anna Cody how what he's doing is actually very cold because it's all just very sudden to which Anna Cody responds saying how Kay did not want to be his pawn to which Kay says that yeah she didn't want to be his pawn and but it's very clear that from Kay's expression and how she's just saying things that Kay didn't really mind working with Anna Cody but now it does seem that Anna Cody plans of ending the relationship so of course with that being said Anna Cody hangs up and just seems to be thinking it's very clear that Anna Cody deep down probably did not want this relationship to end between him and Kay but because of course there's nothing to be done anymore there's nothing that he wants to do involving getting the class to class A there's no real reason as for them to continue on of course he's saying that to himself but deep down he probably has mixed feelings and one thing you should also take into account was how long the conversation lasted it lasted for three minutes so there were a lot of things Anna Koji and Kay said which just goes to show you that it seems like Anna Koji was very hesitant on dropping Kay as somebody that he could use and let's be honest if Anna Koji simply wanted to cut ties with Kay all he had to do was just call Kay tell her that they're cutting ties and just hang up like that's it that would probably would have been like a 30 second conversation but the fact that it lasted you know three minutes just shows you that Anna Koji was not really looking forward to cutting ties with Kay but for him it was something that he had to do and that's when the episode ends so overall really good episode I really do enjoy how they started the new arc which is the rooftop arc of course like I said there were things that they didn't include there were supposed to be scenes that were supposed to be shown but of course they were not but I am hoping that they do add these in the next episode because the scenes that were cut out are very interesting so I do want to see them adapted but overall really good episode like I said this is only just the beginning after this the whole thing just gets crazier and insane there's going to be a lot of more insane moments after this but i'm just going to leave it at that for now hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time